Steve here with another instructional video from Hydro Missions International. In this video, we'll be discussing two critical components used in hand drilling for water, namely lock pins and extension rods. We'll also be discussing how to properly use these in conjunction with the cracking tool to get through compacted gravels and consolidated soft rock formations. There are many, many different types of lock pins and extensions that you can use, and we'll kind of do a brief overview of some of the good, the bad, and the ugly, and some of the critical things that you need to know when trying to fabricate your own extension rods and lock pins in the field. Now in the field, we try to use the longest extension rods that we can find. Often that means going to the scrapyard or looking through the metal bins, and typically we end up finding 10-foot lengths or even 18-foot lengths. Since the Hydro Missions EXP-50 Explorer was designed specifically for ultra portability, especially regarding airlines, we have to fall under the certain weight and size limitations that the airlines require. That's why our extension rods are three feet long. Again, in the field, it's much better to use the longest extension rod possible, but we do this because most of our clients have to travel, and oftentimes on small aircraft. If you are going to make your own extension rods in the field using longer rods, we recommend that you use 10 foot rods for the majority of your drill rig, but always have two of the three foot extensions available. This way, the drill will always be at chest level and it won't be awkward to use. In other words, you start with a three foot extension. When you're finished with that, you add the second three foot extension. When you're finished with that, go ahead and replace those with your 10 foot extension. When you get to the end of your 10 foot extension, you add the next three footer and it always remains at chest level for when you're hand drilling. This is very important because obviously, unless you're eight feet tall, you're not gonna wanna drill that high. You may be tempted to make your own extension rods using standard round galvanized water pipe. It seems like a good idea at first. In fact, our early EXP 50s were made using that. But there's some serious problems in the field. First of all, and probably the biggest, is the threading. Threadings are not standard size. When you go around the world, you'll find French, German, British, metric, all kinds of different threads, depending on what kind of tap they have available. So to match these threads with the collars and all of that becomes very difficult. But that's not even the biggest problem with the threads. If you'll notice, the threads are tapered and they don't have their galvanization anymore. What this translates to in the field is a very significant weak point. These fatigue very easily. As you put more torque on it, this tends to break. In fact, it breaks rather quickly. So that's the one thing, the threading. The other is that because the tube is round, it makes it very difficult to go ahead and try to center a hole to put in a lock pin. If you think you don't need a lock pin, remember, Every time you twist this drill, you're putting more and more torque on it. And basically, you are screwing this down together so that by the time you have to pull it out, you're going to need a serious set of pipe wrenches to get that job done. The square steel tubing is a simple slip fit. However, there are still some disadvantages to that as well. First, there tends to be play between the one inch and the one and a quarter inch. And this can cause your drill to wiggle a bit. That's to be expected, but obviously, the tighter the fit, the better. The other is the gauge itself. Hydro Missions uses 11 gauge square steel tubing. It's nice and thick and pretty good. In the field, however, you may find stuff that's more like this. It's very thin and it can bend, especially when you do a long run over 10 feet. Just make sure that whatever you buy in the field, go ahead and spring for the heaviest gauge that you can find. After a whole lot of research and development and years of being in the field, Hydro Missions has decided to go with the square steel tubing. First, we can always find square steel in whatever country we happen to be. It may not be the gauge that we want, but we can always find it. They use it for welding gates, undercarriages of cars, and things like that, so it's pretty common. The other thing is that the square steel tubing doesn't put pressure on the lock pins themselves. Let me explain. If you have a circular tube, and you're using it with another circular tube. As you rotate through the drilling process, you can see that those tubes make a full revolution on each other. So if you have a lock pin that goes through that assembly, all of the pressure and torque gets forced upon that lock pin and they can snap and break. Not the same story with the square steel. 
as you can see, if you do the same thing with a square inside a square, it gets stopped on the side walls. So the tubing itself is taking the pressure rather than the lock pin. That's really great because the lock pin then is just used to hold the assembly in place as you move the drill up and down your well. That brings us to the lock pin. Hydro Missions has developed what we call the modified scaffolding lock pin. Basically, it's a round piece of bar stock bent in such a way that it can passively hold together the extension rod assemblies. What we really like about the scaffolding design is that the lock pins can be easily reproduced in the field using a standard bench vise and a mallet. The materials also are not finicky. You can use rebar, you can use nails, or pretty much any other round stock that you can get a hold of. The biggest advantage to the scaffold design is ease of use. Simply line up the two holes on your extension and collar, insert the lock pin, and move into place. This is very easy and it's also very good when your hands are muddy or when things start to get wet and slippery during the drilling process. To remove, simply reverse it and pull it out. The very thing that gives advantage to the scaffold design also comes with a strong word of caution. As you can see, the scaffold design has a directionality to it. It's supposed to go in a certain way. Now that means that if you were to reverse it, it can actually open up on its own and fall out. This is why we take the time to make sure that all of the lock pins are facing the same direction when we drill. That way, when we remove the extensions and lay them on the ground, one doesn't mistakenly open up on its own. This brings us to one of the most commonly encountered user errors with the EXP50, namely the cracking bit. Many people feel that they can use this bit like a jackhammer, short, fast, reciprocating strokes to break through the rock. However, it was designed to be used more like a breaking bar. One short, powerful stroke, followed by a reevaluation of your lock pin, followed by another short, powerful stroke. It's only intended to break up rock until you can get back in with your auger bit. If you use this like a jackhammer and never check your lock pins, what happens is with each stroke, the lock pin moves up and down until it falls out, leaving half of your drill down the hole. And believe me, no one wants that. Now you may be asking yourself the question, why not use a better lock pin? Something with a little more safety involved. Perhaps a bolt with a nut or a star washer on it? a cotter pin, or my favorite alternative, a tractor PTO pin. All of these will work, but you have to take into account the fact that every time we move that drill up and down the hole, we have to connect and disconnect those extension rods. That can be rather tedious, plus you need the tools to actually remove any kind of nuts or bolts. Now, with the tractor PTO pin, there's one other significant problem. As you can see, a tractor PTO pin has a spring clip. The PTO pin itself is very sturdy, but the spring clip is not. These tend to fatigue and they become sprung. They'll do this even while in the hole and they'll do this without your knowing it. You'll find out when you pull out half a drill and the other half is left down the hole. This has been a very brief overview of extension rods and lock pins. We are always looking to improve our drills, so if you have any suggestions, please feel free to write in. Until then, thanks for watching, and please stay tuned for more instructional videos from Hydro Missions International.